You know, the more you wipe it, the shinier it gets. The shinier it gets. <laughs> it's kind of like a rock and a gem in a store or whatever you want to call it. It looks good. Yeah, but it's got like a weird color. I don't know if you guys can see it. Maybe when I get the camera going around it, it's like a, it flops from a gray to like a pewter. It's kind of a, a cool color. It's kind of one that I guess I have to grow on you because if I get gray, I want gray or silver. <laughs> but it's kind of interesting, interesting color. Yeah, that's a beautiful car. Only has, I think, 417 miles on it. So it's a baby. Yep. All right, well, let me get into my little spiel. Thank you all for tuning in one more, one more time, one more class session to the Dr. Beasley's online detailing courses that we have every Wednesday. Yep. Every um, Wednesday. We're not doing one next week. I'm not going to be around. So I don't know if you're doing one by solo or not. I'm going solo then. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll have him next week. Actually, those would be good ones for if you just the, that, what that questions. What that really means is like one static camera shot. <laughs> <laughs> but um, then after that is MTE. Yep. So we're definitely not doing one. Well, we're doing a live. We're, uh, yeah, we're actually, I'm teaching a class there at 1 p.m. to 2.45 p.m. on Detailing 101. It's basically everything that's I Wednesday. teach here. That's Wednesday. Um, so that's Wednesday, January 31st. And we're going to broadcast that live. Yeah, so. so if you're not able to go to the class, you'll be able to attend the class because I will be there, man on the cameras, making sure he does what he does. And, yeah. and, all that good stuff. and just to let you know, look, you know, I can't bring a car into this conference room and show you how to do things. So it's going to be a PowerPoint presentation, which I'm not really a big fan of, but sometimes you got to use what you got to use. But it's going to be picture intensive. And all the pictures are from the classes we taught here in November. So everything I'm teaching you how to do was stuff that was really done by students. And it's going to be, it's a great PowerPoint. Well, there you go. See, so... Stay tuned to all the bat channels that they have, Facebook, <laughs> Instagram, YouTube, wherever else, the website. We're going to have all the links posted, all the times, dates, and everything like that, so you can put it on your calendar. And so today, we're going to polish cement. What's that? We're going to polish cement? No, no, no. Ask me if I got a tip to share. What do you have a tip to share? Here's a tip. Focus on exterior paint correction, not interior <laughs> detailing. I am not known as the famous interior detailer. I let my wife do that. She's really good. So I know how to do it, but I like, I already polished the paint on this, by the way. I like doing the outside. So, <laughs> little thing. We're going to see the inside of Mike's workings on how he tackles interior, which yeah. he doesn't like to do. And I know a lot of other people don't like doing interior. But it's important. Is, but it, it's probably one of the most important things especially if you're working in the business because that's where people sit that's where they spend their time they don't yeah. go out and drive yeah. the car and look at the outside they're inside that's where they live and breathe and everything like that it's so. their experiences on the inside our experience for cars is what we see on the outside all right well i'm going to go this way tell okay. them about all your classes that are coming up and stuff and then okay. we'll get you going well this saturday is actually our one day extreme paint correction and ceramic coatings and if yancey pans back here there's a 70 cuda that is just hammered it looks like it's been used as a hockey puck and we're gonna we're gonna go over show car detailing or what i teach is multiple step detailing on the cuda the 1970 Charger is uh, all original, and that's single stage paint. And I've already done a test spot on there to dial in the process we're going to use for that. And this is a 34 Plymouth, and this is where we're going to do use the Dr. Beasley's Z1, which is a ceramic all-in-one. And we're going to just see how good we can get this old Plymouth street rod to look using a one-step process. And this is a base coat clear coat. So base coat clear coat, base coat clear coat single stage. So when you take these classes, you get to work on real cars. They're all hands-on. You get a, ch a chance to work on A lot of times I try to bring in a single stage. So when you return to the real world and someone brings you something like that you'll know what to do um, anyway so I'm gonna head over here because we're gonna start out working on the driver's side and um, uh, the other class coming up is uh, February 16th 17th and 18th it's a three-day class and that's the one that includes learning how everything we teach in the one day class so it's all paint correction ceramic coatings glass polishing engine detailing tons of topics more topics than anybody else teaches in one day and then the second day is dry sanding by hand and by machine using rotary polishers da polishers to remove orange peel and then the third day is extreme boat detailing where i bring in really large boats that are in really bad shape I'll show you how to make them look brand new by machine wet sanding so a lot of different topics uh there's no other class that covers as many topics i do in such a short amount of time there are no 
chairs, there's no sitting, there's no PowerPoint. Be prepared to work, wear work clothes. Okay. <laughs> yes, definitely so, wear work clothes. Okay, so up here, just to start with, I got a whole array of Dr. Beasley products. And uh, Jim was telling me that one of the reasons he brought out a leather line was because so many people talked to him and they, were, they did not like greasy, slimy products that left the seat fill in slick or slippery or added shine. So all his products are focused on maintaining the factory original appearance. So keep that in mind no matter what you're using, the cleaners or the protectants or the conditioners. Um, now, a lot of people think because the car is brand new that you don't need to do anything. But to tell you the truth, it's the most important time to start doing something. And if you're going to, if you're going to own a car with a leather interior, like this Corvette here, um, the one thing I would just point out is that um, if, if you're driving down the road and you look at everybody in the cars, usually what you see is one person and one car in the driver's seat. So it's the driver's seat that really needs the most amount of attention. A attention. And what I always recommend to people is if you really want to keep your car nice, and, you, and it's a daily driver, so you're getting in and out of the seat all the time, then put your car's interior on a monthly maintenance program, at least the seat that you're using. If the, the passenger seat's only used on weekends when you take the wife or the girlfriend out for dinner, then it's not going to wear, nothing's going to wear over there. But you're going to get in, you're going to slide across the bolster here, and that's called abrasion. You know, your pants will abrade this. And that's right here, famous. this blue jean transfer. Yeah, yeah, everything. So you just you think about the high wear areas, the armrest right here, the armrest here. So you have body oils, perspiration, dirt and grime, sweat coming and off. And the Louis Vuitton bag. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I just wanted to point out that these products are also safe for high-end purses or handbags. So anyway, so this car here has uh, air conditioned and heated seats. So it has perforation here. I got a tip I've been sharing for about 15 years on how to how to treat this without clogging up, but also has this beautiful white stitching. And here's the thing. If you go up to Google and type in how to clean white stitching, well, obviously that must be a problem because people want to know how to clean it. And what happens is, is anytime you're putting any kind of product on there, you, you get it moist, that string, that, that thread becomes a dirt magnet, and it, it doesn't get brighter white with time, so what's the opposite of getting brighter white? Duller and black. Usually gray colored. So my own personal technique when I'm working on stuff like this is no matter how safe the product is, I just avoid putting anything on the string at all. But if you Google how to restore that, here's what everybody, all the experts say, dilute some Dawn dishwashing soap and agitate the string with a toothbrush. Okay, now think about it. Look in here, Yancey. How long would that take you to clean all the string in here? Oh, there's you know? tons. It's, I mean, it's, it's just tons. Everywhere. So, it, and, and, and look, if you look up the ingredients to Dawn dishwashing soap, there are so many sur different surfactants and just different cleaning agents. And I'm telling you, if you just had a big picture point of view, is it good for the thread or bad for the thread? I'm going to say it's not good for the thread. So I like to uh, always teach things like on being on preventative maintenance, PMs. We used to call that at Hewlett Packard. I worked at Hewlett Packard at one time, and everybody's making the PMs, preventative maintenance, doing preventative maintenance. Well, instead of cleaning it, just don't mess it up in the first place. And I will tell you that the lo Dr. L Beasley's um, Leather Pro Lock or, or a leather lock pro is clear and so is the cleaner completely clear so you can put it right over the top but my own personal preference is especially when it's someone else's car i just work i, I work around it i don't go over it i try to keep it clean and dry so anyway so let's go ahead and start yancy let me grab some products so this is brand new and um so There's it doesn't, your knee pad thing over there too the i camera. will grab that so it does not really need to be cleaned, but I want to demonstrate the process in case you got an older Corvette or any car with a leather interior. By the way, these are the handiest things. You got to get these up on Amazon. Um, I have them here for all my classes. We sit on our butts on them when we're cleaning, machine cleaning tires, uh, putting coatings on tires, or in this case, kneeling down. You know, I meet so many detailers um, that uh, they're they're physically in bad shape. They got bad backs, bad elbows, bad shoulders, bad knees. So, you know, invest in a good knee pad and protect your knees. You need them. Okay, so this is the Dr. Beasley's uh, Fine Leather Cleanser. Okay, and it is clear. But the way you want to apply this is um, most people would say use a microfiber towel. Okay, here's microfiber. But microfiber does not move over leather. It kind of grabs it. This, I shared this 
when we did that how to machine apply a dressing to a tire and I went to Walmart these are 77 cents a piece it's just a perfectly square little 100% cotton washcloth and it has a nap which is little tiny loops and this actually moves over leather really well it's still completely safe so just you know everybody's all focused on microfiber but sometimes going old school is a better way to go so if you really want to be careful put this away from the car Whoops, open it up there turn it on yeah, you know, I got my contacts in, so I can't see. Stream, spray. Okay. Dampen one side. I mean, you're dampening it. You're not getting it drenched. Yeah, it's, it's not dripping. But, but I'm not getting overspray everywhere, so I spray away from the no, car. No, I'm saying how much you put on the, on the rack. And then come down and start applying it and just rub the leather down with it and clean it up. And uh, this being such a low mileage car, I'm going to just imagine we won't pull any color. We're pulling just a little bit. Color or dirt. But the first thing you want to do is you just want to clean it well, okay? And that way there's nothing uh, sitting on the top of the surface to impede the, um, the leather conditioner from getting into the leather to moisturize it, to nourish it, to provide UV protection, that kind of thing. Keep it soft and supple. Then just come back, flip over, and uh, wipe to a nice dry finish. Okay. And can you see much on there? No. Not really. So, so it's brand new. But again, the most important thing you do something new is start right now to take care of it. Okay, so now I'm done with the cleaner. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to grab a couple things, Yancey. Okay. And uh, I want to make sure I got everything I need here. Okay. Now this is the Dr. Beasley Leather Cream. And this, uh, it nourishes the leather. It uses lanolin, high quality lanolin. And that's going to moisturize and keep it soft and supple. And it won't change the appearance. I might darken it a little bit at first, but that's because it's, you know, it's a very wet product. Now, now there's all kinds of ways to apply this. Um, I like to take this, these simple foam applicator pads. You can get these dang near anywhere. And um, the reason why is because just like with the terry cloth, this product, it, it glides over the leather really easily. And you don't want to be sitting here fighting something because this is, look how complicated this is. This is a very complicated, very over-engineered interior. It's not a 1960 Camaro. It's not a 69 Chevelle where you can just wipe, wipe, and be done. So, you know, it's going to take you some time if you're going to do this and do it right and be careful. So let me... Let me demonstrate the technique for perforated seats. Now, perforated seats are awesome because nowadays, I mean, Yancey, you've got heated and air-conditioned seats, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. And, and mine are one step worse because it's Alcantara. So. <laughs> oh, that is bad. <laughs> but that's so the air can flow through the perforated yeah. holes, so you don't want to clog them up. Okay. So what I've always seen people do is they take and put some product on their applicator pad, then they turn it over and clog all the holes. So here's what you do. Take your fingers and massage this into the pad. And then when you press on the foam, foam will do what it does best, and that's it will release the product. Okay, just like that. Okay, I'm going to break it in up here on a part that's not perforated. Now I'll come down and apply it to the perforated section. And this way you do not load up all those little holes with this lotion cream, no matter whose brand it is. You just don't want to do it. It's just not a good technique. Now you'll be coming back with a little toothpick and poking out all the holes. Yeah, you can either use the toothpick technique or a vacuum. You know, okay. if you've got a good vacuum, you've got to be careful you don't mar the leather, but you could suck it out. You could even take something like a tornador or some compressed air and blow it all the way through. But the better way is just to do what I just showed. Okay, so let me get my big arm out of there. Now, let me show you how I'm going to treat when I want to moisturize and get around these white stitching. This is where it gets kind of tricky. Alrighty. Okay, so I'm going to come up here, and on, I'm, I'm just get... using the very tip of this. I'm sorry. That's one again. way to do it. Okay. And then here's some sage advice I received from an old mentor of mine at McGuire's. I'll give so Mike Pennington. Mike Pennington is the... Um, Director of training for McGuire's. I'm not sure if he's still there. He may have retired. But 
One year, I was teaching a class for the Mini Cooper Club, the Mini Maniacs, I think. And the Mini Maniacs had um, been to my class there a couple times. And so they knew that it was a hands-on class. And they knew as soon as they got there, what they needed to do was to start taping off all that plastic trim around their fender flares. So when we buffed it, we wouldn't stain it. And um, the next day, I got called into the off the next week, uh, I got called in the office because one of the managers drove by in the morning on Saturday and saw everybody out there taping off the trim. And he says, we don't sell tape and we don't teach people to tape off fender flares. And then later on, Mike says, you know, what you want to show people is just how to slow down and be careful. And I still tape off plastic trim. <laughs> but um, the same thing applies here. Slow down, okay? So I was able to treat all this leather between the white stitching and I never touched the white stitching by going up on edge and just slowing down and being careful. And that's how I would treat it. And now you look at all the thin panels I got here. This is a real pain to do. So let me show you another way you can do that. And, number two. And, and keep in mind, this is detailing, right? So we're gonna get into the details. I'm gonna take another one of these applicator pads Got my trusty dusty scissors here. And I'm going to take, and I'm just going to cut out a thin little block of foam. Like this, like that, okay? Now I've got this thin little piece of foam. Let me check and see if it'll fit in between there. Guess what? That's still too big. Let me grab my scissors. I'm going to cut this down and again. You can get over there and then you can see this. This is tedious. But see, the thing is, is the owner of this car is watching. Hi, Scott. And yeah. I like Scott and I like his car. And I don't want Scott to be mad at me for creaming out all the stitching with any kind of product. I want Scott to recommend me to his friends. <laughs> right, hold on one second, Mike. We have a frozen screen. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh. Internet connectivity. I'm checking. Ah, uh, yeah, we froze. Uh. Would it help if I keep talking? Uh. All right, I think we're back. Mike, we're back. Testing, one, two, three. Yeah, I have no idea. It's like everything locked up in the software. All right, let me come back over to you, Mike. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry about that, guys. Technology, sometimes it plays nice, sometimes it doesn't. I have no idea what just happened there. Okay, so here's the little piece that I cut out. And <laughs> look, if anybody says, well, that's just ridiculous. Hey, it's called detail, isn't it? The details. This is getting detailed. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take my product spreader. Looks a lot like a finger. <laughs> I'm going to spread the product out. And I've already treated this once because we were offline, but let me just come up here and show you. See the white string? I am not touching that white string. And there's actually a nice little lip right here. Um, so it, and the strings on the other side. So I got a little a boundary there that helps me to be very careful. Now my good friend Riss Rakana, who is also our uh, director of success, um, he has a background in selling fine Italian leather furniture, 
and I was talking to him today about this, and he told me something really smart. He says, Mike, when you put some leather product on there and it kind of just absorbs right away, that tells you that surface is dry and that, that, that conditioner is going into the letter. It's being absorbed into it. If you come back and put some on it and it kind of sits there and looks wet, it kind of tells you it's full. You've, you've done a good job of conditioning. You can move on it's to full. a new area. It's full. <laughs> I'm full, my belly. It's no longer thirsty, more. okay? And um, anyway, so that's how I would treat that. Now, coming back over to this side here. Where are you going? I'm going to come back over to uh, this side of the bolster okay. right here. So... Um, this is my leather product. I'm going to do the same technique I did before. One of the things I also do is I take a Sharpie marker. This is kind of just my own little technique. And I'll usually do something like this. You want to guess why, Yancy? So that way you know if you drop it on the floor. No, that's good if you drop it on the floor. But now I know where to put my fingers. Ah. So I'm going to put, be putting the product here. Otherwise, when you turn it over, you're like, where did I? And I, it's hard to tell where you put the product. So I just put a little mark there. So if you come around and look at all my applicator pads, usually they got these little black lines all over them. I actually shared this technique one time with our good friend over at uh, Truck U, uh, Matt Steele. Um, I sent him a bunch of products to coat his brand new truck, and I showed him how to do that. And I, I wonder if he ever even read the directions, or, or he just goes, what the hell is that black line for? Okay, so now I'm going to come in here, and uh, being on camera, I can't really poke my head in here too much. But see how I'm applying this, but I'm not going over the white string. So very tedious work. Now, if you do this professionally, you want to make sure you're charging properly. You know, um, one of the things I teach in our classes about detailing for money is that anytime you're doing interior work, it should always be a separate day and a separate charge. Don't lump it in with doing everything else that you're going to do. And the way I explain that to my customers is real simple. You know, look, Bob, if I'm on the outside doing paint correction and coatings, I can't be on the inside doing the inside. So I'm happy to do the inside, but it's a separate day and a separate charge. And then most of the time, my customers will say, eh, it's okay, interior is pretty clean, just skip it. And then I get out of doing interior work. But if they so really, that's what you do it for. <laughs> yeah, but if they really want it done, I'm happy to do it, but it's a separate day, a separate charge. Okay, so back to the leather cream. And it's a good idea to go ahead and do this, even to brand new leather, just to go ahead and load it up. You know, it's, it's, look, it's easier to keep something nice than it is to take something that's worn out and bring it back to life again. Years ago, I taught this class on plastic trim. Okay, I'm going to come in here if you want to. I'm going to break this in up here on the headrest where it's smooth, non-perforated. Kind of break it in. I'm going to come down here, and then I'm going to hit the perforated section. Now, is there any tricks or anything that you have for when you do the seams, like where it's pleated in right where you're at? I'm just taking, put a little extra pressure in there and just push it in. Then you also want to come back and absorb anything out with your terry cloth towel. Okay, does that look good, Yancy, from where you're standing? Yeah. Okay, so I got this side, I got that, I've done the seat down over here. So, um... So I showed you going up on end to get in here, but you could also cut a piece of foam to get in between this here. It's about an inch and a half. Same thing over there. But just remember that little technique. You know, have a pair of scissors, a little piece of foam. Okay, then again, after working that in, come back and just wipe off any excess. Because we're going to put a coating on this next. And so some people would say, well, how is the coating going to bond to the leather? if you just put a lanolin-based conditioning cream on there? And that is a good question. <laughs> so, but that's why our coating system is a two-part system. There's two parts to it. There's the prep, and then there's the coating. Wow, that, that looked good when it was new. It looks even better now. Okay, I gotta get up and go grab a couple products. <sighs> All right, well, he's walking away. If you have any questions or any concerns, what do you call it, you know, put it, or... Uh Things that you like to ask, Mike, put it in the comments, and we'll get to those at the end of the session. Okay, so now I've got the coating. I got a fresh applicator pad. Okay, and I'm going to uh, start out by showing my little technique here. Again, uh, clean and dry. I'm just going to put a little mark here, and all the mark is is just tells me where to put my fingers. Okay, and I'm going to put the product on this side of the mark, so I know I'm always putting the product in the same place. Okay, set this aside. Okay, so this is the Leatherlock Pro kit. 
It's a two-part component. Everybody reads left to right, right? right? So there's a prep spray, then there's the actual coating itself. So the prep spray is going to clean any of that lanolin condition we put on off the surface so this can make a proper bond. And um, the way you want to apply this, clean towel, mist, terry cloth. It's going to glide easily easily over the surface. Um, I watched some videos to see what other people were showing and I kept seeing everybody showing microfiber and I watched them try to get the microfiber to move over the leather. It looks so clumsy. I was like, dudes, go old school. Get some terry cloth. Okay. Okay, I put a little bit right there in the corner. I'm just going to come up here and rub right there in the middle. This product's completely clean so I'm not too worried about it, you know, changing the color of that white string. And you know what I did uh, before we started just to verify for you and me is I squirted these into a white little cup just to make sure because sometimes things are like an amber colored. Okay. So the coating has to cure for 20 to 30 minutes then you give it a final wipe. So I'm going to put the coating on next, then we're just going to have to go over here and we can talk about some of the other products. We can answer some questions. Um, I could keep working on the car. That way I don't got to stay too late tonight. This is going to leave here tomorrow. Okay, so there's wipe down. Not pulling any color, no dirt, no dye, no nothing. Okay, so then the last part would be applying the coating. Now, the kit comes with the microfiber block, and this does work. I just prefer the foam applicator pad. Uh, simply just because it, it just works better to glide over leather is why. Um, boom, right here. Okay. And uh, this, a little bit of this goes a long way. So um, I'm going to turn this over, okay? And I'm going to put one, two, three little tiny drops. And let's just see how wet this is going on. Look at that. See that? Um, mm -hmm. Don't, you don't, misunder, don't misjudge this product. It's, it's very... It's a very wet product, a uh, little bit goes a long ways. And then boom, just start massaging this in. And you want to kind of see a wet film on there. You don't want to be like saturated wet, but you want to be able to see there's something on there. Now when we're done, and this is what people like, is this is going to look factory new. It's not going to have that glossy, greasy look to it. So I'm going to come in and hit the perforated areas. Now is it going to be slick? Is it going to be natural feeling? Uh, it's going to have a natural feel to it. Um, I would say I noticed on my own car a little bit of slickness, but one of the things that this product's going to do is it helps prevent um, abrasion uh, from friction. So that's by making it just a little bit slippery. Not like you're going to slide out, but just more than natural leather. But it won't change the way it looks. So that's what people hate. Um, there's some products out there that have a really big reputation in our industry. And what people don't like is they make it look like you just use that armor product on leather. Armor! I would never say the name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But again, one of the things you can see is just how tedious this is. And nothing wrong with that, especially if it's your own car and you kind of enjoy working on your own car. You can go out to the garage, turn up some music, and you know, enjoy your car. But as a detailer, you make sure you allot enough time to handle all this. Now I know this question is going to come up. It might already be in the comments, but I can't see my computer right now. Could you use this on Alcantara? No, this is not for Alcantara. It's okay. primarily that for automotive. There, that's going to come up. Automotive coated leather. Okay, so now it's the tricky part. I'm putting this just right on the edge. And again, this is clear, so it won't stain white threads, but I still just want to keep it just on the leather. You can't see this part, but I can. But I'll come over here and do the other side. Just trying to be thorough. This car's leaving tomorrow morning, and Yancey, one of us is staying late to finish the other side. Guess who it is? It is you. It is me. So... I always tell people, at least I love what I do. <laughs> and look, I'm working on something really cool. You know, over the weekend, I worked on two Ferraris. Um, I try to take one day off a week. 
um, I got these Ferraris ready for the Cavallino, um, the Ferrari Cavallino show down in West Palm Beach coming up in a couple weeks. And the time, there was just a time crunch. There wasn't going to be enough time to, for me to go there during a week or something. So I went out and did one on, I did one on Saturday and I did one on Sunday. One of them's worth about a million. The other one's worth about four million. To me, paint's paint. I'll work on a Ford. I'll work on a Ferrari. I don't really care. And um, so see how I'm going up on edge here? Mm-hmm. Just going up on edge. So I'm just, I'm not really rubbing it on to the stitching at all. Now, modern day interior materials, and I know there's a big thing going on about, what do you call it, vegan leather. Like Teslas have this vegan leather. Would this be also be able to be used on that? Yes, this can be used. We have a separate vegan line, which is more specific to vegan. Uh, but I think, I think Chris told me this could also be used on vegan leather. But I should check before I make a blanket statement like that. Okay, another question is, how would somebody know? Because a lot of these materials, they may look like leather, but they're really not leather. How, what's a good way to distinguish? Between okay, them? come down here and look at this. And look, it looks a little bit splotchy, okay? Um, that, that's normal. This is a real coating, okay? And... Um, what you want to do is you want to, uh, I'm just going to come back here and just lightly wipe this to remove any excess. But now I want to let this sit for 30, 20 to 30 minutes, okay, to um, fully cure. And full cure actually comes in about three hours. So if you're a detailer, you can uh, knock this out in a day and give it back to the customer. We have another product that's a spray-on. It's water-based. This is solvent-based that um, is called just uh, Leather Lock, not Leather Lock Pro. And that full cure is 24 hours because it's water-based. It's going to take a lot longer to cure out. So that would be, you'd have to have a customer bring the car in and have to be there for at least 24 hours, obviously, before they take it home. Okay, so let's go ahead and can you have a timer? Can you set a timer? 433. 4.33. Wow, that takes us right up to 5 o'clock to to show this. But you know what I did do is I put a little bit on the door. On this side. On this side over there. And I can, we can show what it's going to do okay. by walking over and showing that. I just saw a pot, part I missed. So give me, once I stood up, I could see it. Being on my knees, I couldn't see it. And I am a stickler for detail, so it kind of goes with the name detailer. Yeah, well, you would think. Ba-dum-bum-bum. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, and you let that sit. Of course, in the real world, you would do the whole thing, you know, and then come back in 30 minutes and start uh, wiping it down. Okay, so here is some water, just normal tap water in a tiny little cup. So cute. Here, this is called a pipette. Yeah, you're really getting really big into those. <laughs> okay, so I've already treated this, the full meal deal, clean, condition, coated. This is a couple hours ago. And so now you can see the water beating, beating up. And, and what this means is if you're driving down the road and you've coated your car and you still your, spill your Starbucks coffee, that you can come back and wipe it up and it will not stain your seats. So that is the power of a That's quality like magic. leather c- uh, coating for your car versus just a conditioner and, and stopping. And of course, you know, you can, I borrowed this from the wife. This is a Louis Vuitton purse. Um, I forget how much it costs. It was in the thousands. But this would be a good way to protect and treat it. So if you're out at a restaurant, someone spills a glass of wine, a glass of water, you can quickly wipe that off and you won't be staining those expensive uh, handbags or even dress shoes. Dress shoes? Hey, there's an idea. There's another park use. All right, I'm going to swing you back over to the other camera, if you would, please, sir. Okay, I'm going to bring up some of my products up here There's a cleanser. then I don't know if you heard me when I asked the question yeah um, oh uh, how do you know if it's real leather yeah. well, well the well here's here's the thing is all all most not all but most leather in modern cars is what's called coated leather and um, but underneath that is real leather and so the question is, uh, why would you tra- take care of the coated portion? Well, 
two reasons. One, uh, doing nothing isn't going to make it look good for very long. Um, I would love to, I always see people say, well, I use nothing but a microfiber towel and water. Well, I like to see an interior like this taken care of nothing but micro, microfibers and water after about five years go by compared to if someone maintained it the way I'm showing over the course of five years. I guarantee you this is going to look better. It's going to feel better. It's going to last longer. Um, but the other thing is, is you always have to assume that, you know, any uh, brand that has any kind of reputation at all, don't you think they got a chemist? And that's like my job is to do this kind of grunt work. But the chemist's job is supposed to, he's supposed to know what that seat's made of so he knows how to make the formulas to work with that material. So I always just tell people to trust the brand. You know, trust the brand. Trust they got a chemist that knows what the heck they're doing. And then just follow instructions. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> you know, go back to the garbage can, pull them out, read them if you make a mistake. and uh, you know, That's uh, half the battle. People don't like reading instructions. You know, at one time I was a copyright for another company. And uh, a lot of people, you know, you might not know this, but, but uh, when it came time to create a label for a product, I would have to make an appointment to go visit the head chemist, and he would give me the directions how to use the product. So if we assume that all reputable companies work the same way, you don't just have somebody making stuff up and putting it on the label. You have somebody that's checked with the chemist that formulated the product who can say, here's how you use that product correctly. Okay. All right, let's switch over to me. Hey, everybody. Sorry about the little technical glitch. I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> it's just internet? I don't know. I have no idea. But I am back, and we are ready to start doing some of your comments. And I see that you guys got quite a bit, and there's actually some that I think Mike just helped you out with. So switch it back over to Mike. And we have Humberto first from Puerto Rico ready to roll. We have... Uh, Elia, let's get started. Technical officer, ditto. So I guess everyone is ready. And this is Elia. Elilia, I think that's how you would say it. My C8 arrives in a couple months. I like to know the best, least, know the best, least anti-wear product for the bolsters. Well, I just, I just showed you. That's the pro -lock, leather pro lock from Dr. Beasley's. And um, I hope you didn't order... Uh, the beautiful contrasting white stitching with black leather, it does look good. I got to tell you, I love it. But it, you, it's so much harder. It would be better to have black stitching. You just cream over everything. Uh, but just take your time, do it right. And don't forget the little foam block tip I shared with you. You know, you can buy these. We carry these at Dr. Beasley's. You can buy them by the six-pack, I think. But just, you know, custom cut. I do this for sanding, by the way. When I'm sanding down cars, I just take one of my backing plates and cut it to the panel I got to fit. So make your own product sometimes. All right. Like, you know, we have my guy Kirby. Kirby. Uh, afternoon to Mike and Yancey and the viewers too. Right back at you. Uh, we have optical clarity detailing. Hey, Mike and Yancey, hope you're having a good day so far. Was until the internet did something, but <laughs> having a better note now. Uh, so I understand most factory leather is coated. Are all these conditioners really not penetrating into the leather material? Ah, good question. If they're coated, or is it really penetrating, or is it just floating on top? Uh, well, it's a little bit of both, you know. So um, the coating, look, the that surface material has a porosity to it. Okay, it's not like a piece of glass. Okay, so it has a porosity to it. So that's one of the things is is you're supposed to massage it over the surface with actually to massage it into the surface to some level. No, oh, we had somebody else coming in. Uh, da, 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 da. Alien, uh, yes, optical clarity deal thing is right. This is a C8, not an old Wrangler with open cell leather. This is completely wrong way to treat these seats. Yeah, if, if you've got something that has what I think they call aniline leather or new buck, um, this would not be the product for that. This is for coated leather. Okay. Uh, King, Ford King Ranch, they sold, oh God, their, they sold their trucks with this uh, natural leather. And if you notice, you can't get it anymore. You know why? Because it was a consumer relations nightmare. Uh, people not putting the right stuff on it, changing the way it looked, hating it, going back to the dealership, complaining. The dealership going, we didn't make the truck, we just sell it. Uh, but, but the reason they went away from it is because it's just too hard for the average person, the average car owner, to take care of properly. You know, in, in the world, is a term called Bubba proofing. Um, I learned this in the fiberglass industry where you have to bubba proof the instructions and the products so the lowest common denominator among us can use them correctly. 
pop a boat out of a mold. And, uh, but it's called Bubba proofing. And really, uh, cars really need to be made like that. You know, most people, all they know is how to push the button and start it. That's all they know. So, but that's what these classes are here for, is to help you learn how to do your own detailing. Okay. Um, they had a conversation going in there. I think, what do you call it? Uh, looks like Chris is the one that was talking to him there going back and forth about the things. If you want to read it, there's just a lot going back sure, and forth. Sure, and that's what's cool about these doing live is you get to interact in real time. Yeah, you know? I mean, but it's a conversation between two people and it's just, it'd be, I'd be flipping back and forth, back and forth. It's okay. It's just talking about how coated leather and non-coated leather is. And you were kind of talking about it just a minute ago, so that's why I let you keep talking. Um, we have Sarah. How long do most coatings for leather last? That's a good one. Our, our uh, leather our, our pro coat is rated up to five years, but it, it really just depends on use, you know, um, and that's in a perfect world situation. But my, my, my recommendation would be is if this is a daily driver and you're getting out of that driver's seat all the time is I'd put it on at a minimum, at a minimum every two or three months. You know, if you're just using the leather cream, you're not using a coating. It doesn't hurt to go out monthly and clean the leather seat on the driver's side of the car. Uh, the leather seats in my car and my wife's cars are immaculate. Now, my wife does all that work, but, but the thing is, is she's always doing it. She's always keeping these seats clean. She isn't just letting it go to where it gets to the point where like, wow, this doesn't look good. I need a miracle product in a bottle to fix it, you know, late night TV kind of thing. Okay, um, we have another one coming back in, Paul McCotney. Isn't Mulan leather faux material? Then, I think it was Chris that chimed in here. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Yes, most leather, and especially automobile leather, is correct protected, which is embossed leather pattern for more uniform appearance and apply a layer of protection. And long, longevity. It just it lasts a long time. It looks good a long time. But yeah, if you look at the, the grain pattern on this leather seat of this Corvette, it's absolutely uniform. But I'm telling you, cows don't come like that, you know. Real leather doesn't come like that. And let, let's, I know you were telling me earlier, let's, um, our director of success, yes. Chris. Chris. You want to give a little insight on his background that makes him kind of a very knowledgeable Well, he, on this he was an importer of uh, fine Italian leather furniture. Okay, and he was always competing against all the, the, the cutthroats out there, the, the, the cheapy guys. So he knows quite a bit about leather, it, you know, used in the, in the world, not just in the uh, furniture industry. So I always kind of lean on him for his expertise. But, you know, the big picture is this, you know, ag again, look, whatever the leather is in your car, it's better to do something than nothing, okay? And so that's where, in the big picture, just find a brand you trust, pick the right products for the surface, Follow the directions, and you're ahead of the game compared to everybody else. Okay. You, it looks like there, we had a heated debate on stuff going on. I'm not going to read it. All right. Director of success. Should one intend to extend the life of leather for years and hopefully decades, you must keep that leather coated or not, nourished to it, continues to be soft and supple. Otherwise, this is Chris, otherwise the leather will dry out, get hard, and fail. Yep, it'll, uh, you'll see cracks in the leather. And, you know, and that's what I say. People always, you know, I've been paid to answer questions on the detailing world for over 20 years. So here's a common question. Hey, I've got cracks on the leather on my bolsters. How do I fix it? Well, the, the, real, the real fix was to have done something so you didn't get to that point. You know, so that's called PMs, preventative maintenance. Okay, here's a good, um, this is our buddy. Uh, actually, we just watched one of these videos with him, Renardo Wilson. Ah, Remember? Renardo. Um, would you rec recommend using the coating system on the dash as well? Well, you, you, uh, you, you could if it's a leather dash, but instead we got a product called, um, what is it, the heck is it called, Dash Pro. And this is a coating for the dash, and what it does is it makes it so dust just literally cannot stick to the surface. So then when you're driving, the normal vibrations of the car going on the road knocks it off onto the floor, and from there you can, you know, vacuum it out or blow it out. But at least it's not on the dash where you've got to see it or it'll get into the air and then you've got to breathe it because it can cause allergies and it can, uh, you know, breathing in a lot of dust for some people is really messes up their lungs. But that's what I would use. In fact, before this car goes, that's what I'll be using. I'll be using the Dash Pro on this brand new Corvette, which has an incredibly well, just the design of the whole top of the dash is like nothing you've ever seen. It's really wow. cool. All right. Um, 
there's <laughs> y'all are active in the comments today. Okay, uh, Paul McCotney, <laughs> bonded leather basics. Bonded leather is made from a small amount of leather scraps and fibers. It is mashed into a pulp, then binded into a paper or fiber backing using polyurethane. Bonded leather is also sometimes returned, referred to as a composite leather, vinyl, and reconstituting leather, which is what you were telling me about before we went live. Then we have, I guess they were arguing about what type of bonded stuff is and we Victor yeah, this like has always been a little bit of a controversial subject. I but see that. I'm reading that. Oh, in the gosh, yeah. Right now. Yeah, but, but again, I just like to bring everybody back to the big picture. Whatever the material is, you got to do something to it. You, you got, it's your choice. Do nothing or do something. If you're going to do something, that means you're going to apply something. So find a brand you trust. That means you love the chemist. Read the directions, apply it. You're going to be so much further ahead by just doing common sense things like that versus listening to some trolls on the internet say, wipe it down with a microfiber towel and some water. <laughs> okay. Wait, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm going to bypass some of this. It looks like y'all are arguing back and forth. Um, I, nobody can argue with what I just said. Nobody no. can argue with that. All right, so yeah. let's go over here. Um, I quit arguing with people on the Bob internet. Massimo, yeah. are all leathers coated or just newer cars? Uh, I'd say probably everything, probably since the 80s, you know, just, but not all, you know. It depends on what the car is, the make of the model, and what you ordered. I think, like, if you get into the real high-end luxury cars like Bentley and Rolls-Royce, they're going to have a different leather in them than mass-produced cars from GM, Ford, Honda, and Toyota. So, you know, the, the first thing you can do is if you're going to go buy a car, whether it's a Toyota Camry or a Bentley, is ask the sales guy, what kind of seat is this? What kind of leather is this? They should know their business, okay, and tell you what it is, or Google it. Okay, and actually here is a good one coming in from, first from Puerto Rico. How does temperature and humidity affect leather conditioning factors? Yeah, well... Um, uh, fun, interesting you say that. I wrote an article about this years ago, and the question was, you know, what's the best temperature to detail a car? And I think in that article I said, uh, you know, once you get down to 60 degrees or below, everything that you're trying to work with is going to be just more difficult to work with. Once you get over 80 degrees, it's going to be also difficult because it's going to evaporate. So you want to be in that sweet spot between 60 and 80 degrees, hopefully around 70 degrees would be best. I think we're 72 in here. And... Um, uh, anytime you have something that's hot, hot, heat tends to dry things, evaporate things out. Cold, not so much. A real way to prove this to yourself, an easy way to prove this to yourself, is if you live someplace where it's winter. Well, we're in winter here, Yancey. It's not very cold outside. But take a bucket of water in the winter and throw it out on the sidewalk and watch how long it takes to evaporate. It takes a long time. Throw that same bucket in the summer, boom, water evaporates pretty quickly. So heat does have an effect on drying things out, and that would include your leather. Okay, yeah, so he, like... Arizona, think of it like how your skin, this is the way I look at it. If you're in a place that's hot and humid, your skin's going to stay moist. So your leather's going to stay moist. Just yell at me if I'm wrong. Um, whereas if you're in the desert, like in Arizona, where it's high heat, low humidity, dries out, so your leather will dry out faster. Am I wrong on that or am I right? That eh, sounds good to me. <laughs> you know, I don't know. know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, okay. How, how about this? Do something to your seats once in a while. Yeah, no, I agree you know? with that. I totally agree with that. You know, right. most people do nothing. I mean, right. I detail enough cars to see what they do. They don't do, do anything. Even car guys do nothing. Okay, I think uh, Chris comes in here and puts this whole leather stuff to rest in the best, easiest way possible. Leather is to bonded leather as wood is to press board. There you go. That, I think that is a good way to sum it all up. Uh, most American Asian cars use the word leather seating and is often size of bolsters are not true leather. I don't know. You'd, like again, you'd have to talk to the manufacturer. That was Kirby. So, you know, and just if we follow that logic, okay, so say the bolsters are made of something different. Okay, so what? Don't put anything on them? I mean, again, it comes down to the big picture idea. Find a product you like, use it often. Your leather's going to look new longer than if you did nothing or follow that really bad advice that I've seen for years. Take a microfiber towel with some water and wipe things down. That's, you know, that might give you some light cleaning, but there's nothing on the maintenance side, the abrasion side, the UV side, the, the nourishing side. There's nothing there for whatever that material is at the end of the day. So, okay. you know. 
Um, this is a good question. Herberto coming back in. <laughs> if you use too much conditioning on leather, can it clog the pores? No. What it's going to do is at some point it's just going to sit on top. It's not going to go in. It's a way to tell that the, the leather is full or it's, it's gorged. And then you wipe that excess off. Okay. And th that's actually not even a bad practice is to apply the product until you see it's just not soaking in anymore. Okay. Um, I think that was all of them. There's a conversation going on back and forth about what and where. I'm not even going to get into that. Uh, bah, 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 bah. There was one other one. I'm trying to find it now. Uh, yeah, I can't find it now. It, it's, it's, I'm not, it's, there's too It's much. okay. You know, um, I, I was a little bit worried about doing this topic just because there's so many opinions out there. Sometimes they're just flat out trolls out there. But I'm going to say it again. I've said it five times, I think. At some point, you have to do something to the car, okay? You have to do something to the seat to maintain it, to clean it, to make it look good, to make it smell good, to make it feel good. So at the end of the day, you know, find a, a brand, and behind the brand is a chemist, okay? When I hear people say, you know, I really love that product, you know what they're really saying? I really love that chemist. The chemist is the guy that made the product or the lady that made the product. And, uh, but a lot of people think of it, don't think of it like that. But everything comes down to the chemist, not the, not the tube, not the brand, not the anything else. But find something you like and use it. You know, I always say find something you like, use it often. But often can be relative. You know, like I was pointing out earlier in this show, you get in and out of the driver's seat more often. It's going to see more abrasion, more wear, more tear, more stretching Agreed. versus the passenger side. So find something you like and use it often on the seat that you sit in the most. And like most people, if the other seats, you know, treat them once a year and you're good to go. But you still got to, you got to do something. No, I was <laughs> no, I was. And when this live broadcast is over, I am going to go do something. I'm going to treat every little square millimeter of leather in this leather-seated Corvette with the Dr. Beasley's product, and I'm confident the owner's going to pick it up tomorrow and he's going to absolutely love it. And the, for those of you out there, these actually smell relatively pretty good. Yeah, oh wow, I like the smell of that one. The cleanser, I like the smell of the cleanser. Because um, I know sometimes when you get in, you get interior cleaners and they be like very perfumey and just don't smell right. Or, so. or just make you gasp. Yeah, yeah, just like, <laughs> like a lot of APCs. All right, so. so with that being in mind, thank you again. Um, there's a whole conversation that I didn't cover, you know, talking it out. You can go back and read that about, you know, the difference between things. I'm not going to get into all that. Um, but anyways, thank you all for tuning in. And if you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe. That way it helps you. Dr. Beasley's out and we can move up the algorithm and the ever-changing algorithm. and just, Keep these things going on. And keep these things going on. And like always, if you do have any topics that you would like to see or have Mike discuss, what do you call it? Put it in the comments below. Shoot him an email. Call him on his cell phone. Put up the bat signal and the smoke signals, whatever you want to do. <laughs> I'm sure that we'll be able to get it this day and age. And other than that, uh, Mike will be by himself next week. next week. I will be, I'm out of town. I'm on the way to Memphis, so I will go and go get some good barbecue. And then the week after that, we'll catch you live, what time? Uh, 4, 4 p.m. Eastern time, which is 1 p.m. Pacific time, which is 2 p.m. Mountain time, and 3 p.m. Central your, time. That's your class for MT. Oh, my class yeah. for MT is, uh, starts at 1 p.m. Uh, Wednesday, January 31st at uh, Mobile Tech Expo, and I'm either, either in the DeSoto 3 or DeSoto 4 room, one right. of those two rooms. But what I was getting at with that is that live feed is going to be from the class for that Wednesday, and that will be at a different time. So if you want to Got tune it, in yes. and one see what he has to say, what his class is that he's doing at MTE, um, what do you call it? You're going to have to get in a little bit earlier, maybe call in for lunch or, you know, just take a, a and, MTE day. And on Thursday, which is called Education Day, um, we're actually, I have three classes, glass polishing, NSP technology, and uh, how to become the recognized detailing expert in your hometown. And those will also all be broadcast live. Oh, I am? Oh, I thought that was the deal. I thought we were doing that. Okay. Well, I'm doing them all live. <laughs> Never mind. Well, recorded, but I thought we were oh, doing no, live. Oh, no, no. Yeah. I think we can, we can, okay. we can do that. That's if we fine. can, we will. Yeah. Um, no. All right. Oh, yeah. Now I know what I'm doing the entire week. I thought I was recording. But it's all good. Live is better. I like being live. That means I can touch and feel you all. All right. <laughs> so, Mike, what do we say? Uh, thank you for joining us and uh, hope to see you at the next live broadcast. All right. Say bye. Bye now.